Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Pokemon chat. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Monster Castle Radio Show. For the extreme paranormal listener. And here is your host, the Wolfman, Mike. in the house. So tonight's second show, second half of the show, or this is a different show, uh, um, we're just going to talk, I think the start of this show is going to be about shadow people. <laughs> is uh, Jeff there? Yeah, I'm here. Right on, buddy. I've got a shadow person story for you. You do? Oh, oh, nice. (laughs) Oh. Yeah, forget, right? Yeah, that was... Um, Set us up. All right, let it it rip, man. All right, so... You know... This happened a long time ago, but I can't forget it. You know, I was probably... I, I, actually, I was nine years old. Um, this happened at night. I was going to bed. And um, I hit my room. You know, close the door. Turn the lights off. Get in bed. It's quiet. You know, at the time I had... Uh, you know, I had a pet rat, and uh, you know, real friendly. You know, you'd call it, it'd come to you. You'd play with it. Well, it was uh, just laying there. Lights were off, peaceful, quiet, and uh, I could hear on the carpet like like footsteps, like moving across the carpet and I'm thinking what the you know what is this and uh you thought it was your rat no yeah I thought it was a rat you know like but it felt like bigger steps and all of a sudden the rat starts uh running back and forth through the cage and like shaking the cage had he done that before Oh no, never. First time. Never done this before. This is so, really yeah. creeping me out because you know, just and this started it's kind of a creepy no. story. I'm hearing some 
voices in my backyard. Okay, keep going. It's, it's, I mean, rats freaking me out. Guess what? That freaked me out. So I tilt my head up, and I, I look at the rat cage, and I look over at the door, because my bed was across the roof from the door, and then the, uh, the rat cage was on the opposite wall, you know, between the, uh, the door and the bed. I look over, you know, and there, there's some light coming in through the window, not a whole lot. Uh, just some moonlight. And you see this, and you hear this, these, these like, like soft footsteps on the carpet. I mean, it's that quiet. And you see like this three foot, like three, I, the only way I could describe it was like a three dimensional like shadow. It's like a shadow that had had depth to it, had dimension to it. It had weight to and it. And you look, it had weight, you could hear it. And guess what? It looks over, and I'm not kidding you, it's got red eyes. I mean, these were red, I mean, like glowing eyes. This was in and your room freaked, or right in your I bedroom? Mean, Right in the bedroom, and the rat's freaking out. I'm like, what the... And I just, like... You know, I just, like, sat up, and I was just, like... And I just yelled at, like, the top of my lungs, like, get out of here. You know? Because I, I didn't know what else to do. Did but, you I mean, stay I there? Just, I, I yelled, get out of there, and I ran up, and I, like... And I just ran over to the light and turned it on, and it was gone. Did you tell your parents? Nope. It was just too freaky. <laughs> I mean, this was something that just... Did you ever tell him later? I'm... No. How old were you then again? I was nine years old. I mean, so it wasn't just... I know it wasn't me, like, freaking out, you know. It's like an animal. Heard it, too. But it walked from, like, the door towards, like, you know, the... The rat cage that I had, it didn't walk towards me, which is kind of strange. It's checking out your pet rat. Oh, it man. Knew it, it knew it was coming. It freaked it out. It freaked out the, the, what uh, your, the rat. What was, your, what was your rat's name? Uh, his name was Ray. <laughs> Ray the rat. Was it a white and black one? <laughs> or you could call him a Jay. It was a, you... it was a white one with red eyes. Maybe. <laughs> it had red eyes too. It had red eyes too. It was like a bunny. Yeah, man. When I wake up in the morning, I've got the red eyes too, man. <laughs> Different kind of red eyes. But that's something I mean, I'll never forget. That just. I had rats too. I loved rats. Rats so... are good pets. Yeah, yeah. And they're sure. good eating too. <laughs> <laughs> Good honest taste. Tastes great. Right? <laughs> like on that old lunch show. Great, man. Have that you guys, a... when you were, at, hey, I got a really cool thing. You can still do this, but when I was a kid, we used to play a game called Faces and Features. And we used to go inside, actually, it was a doghouse, and you could shut the door, and it was completely black, dark in there. And just sit down and stare at either one per one person, or it could be three people all staring at the person next to each other. But it works better when you just stare at one person straight on, face to face, and then you, then you ask a question: Can I see the faces and features of, say, Elvis Presley? And it's amazing what happens if you just sit there staring. All of a sudden, you see Elvis Presley. I mean, when your eyes start adjusting to the dark? Because there's no light at all. There is no light. So you just start so seeing your things. Mind. Your mind starts just creating things. Weird. Uh, it's almost like an isolation box. If you can right. cut the light completely out. Like, we had this place so that there was absolutely no light. It was complete darkness. Yeah, see, that my room wasn't like that, man. It was yeah, it had moonlight come through. There was some light under the door. You know. 
That's a no, I believe it. I believe it. It's a great story. Oh, it's, yeah. You guys want to hear a similar story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never really thought about it being like a shadow person story, but uh, there was one time I was backpacking up in Pennsylvania, and uh, we were like, I was with my girlfriend, we were like five miles from the nearest road, you know, out in the middle of the woods. And we're in the tent, and uh, it's pitch black. There's no moon. And uh, I hear this noise, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, it's like a skunk or something outside a raccoon. And so I just opened up the tent, and I looked out, and I saw this, like, glowing, and I thought it was eyes, right? And it, it was kind of green, greenish, just very faint. And I'm staring at it, and it's only about four feet away. And uh, so I go, I get my flashlight, and I shine it out there, and there's nothing there. And uh, so the flashlight kind of ruined my night vision, so I, I didn't see it. I turned the flashlight out, and I didn't see it. But then uh, I go, a few minutes later, I go back and look, and it's there again, you know. It's like something is there that's glowing. And I was getting freaked out, like, what this could be. So eventually, like, the next morning, I get out, and I'm looking, like, exactly where I was staring. And there was a, a root that was rotten, and it had... You know, this is the best explanation I have. It had some sort of, like, glowworms or something, maybe, because it was rotting, and it was, like, bioluminescence. But it's, you know, my mind, you, it just plays tricks on you. Like, you see eyes. Like, if something's glowing, it just freaks you out. Could have been green lichen, maybe, or something. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes I get bioluminescence on my armpits. We know. Uh, maybe not. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever seen auras around people? Like stare at another person in the light? Yeah. And then see their aura? I have. Yeah, it's, it's Once really Once in a while cool. I can see that. I found Different a, people have different colors around them. I actually have a technique on how to put myself into that frame of mind where I can see that. And it's, it's by shutting my eyes, like almost all the way but leaving them open just slightly so just this weird bit of distorted light I can see right and I just uh, I just do that for a while and I kind of meditate and try to put myself to sleep but leave my eyes just partially open and then all of a sudden it just start it just you'll just explode and you'll see all these weird colors and shit will start just freaking right you freaking you right out you can then you can see the it's almost like you're seeing like a bat like you can see like without your eyes open you can shut your eyes and see but it's all in weird energy like kind of electrical looking shit I've been in that zone before a few times yeah it's hard to get into that zone though yeah I guess different ores mean different things different colors I'm not an expert when, when I was training martial arts, we did the blindfolded sparring, and that's how I first encountered that. Well, that'd be a challenge. Yeah, well, somebody's kicking and fight, punching at you, and you're blindfolded, right? After a while, you start seeing shit, and it's weird. <laughs> and you can just feel it when someone's going to go kick you. and then But then, after, then you start noticing that elect, sort of like an electrical outline around, and it's like black and white, sort of. But you can sort of, you can still sort of see. And you probably pick up more on the sounds too. No, not at all. It's just like a feel, like an electrical feel. Like you, you, I can feel the static energy from the other person's body, like the electrical field. Yeah. It's electrical. Do you think that's where uh, we got this Pokemon idea? Maybe the cameras can pick up. 
how the fuck do they do that, eh? That's weird. What, how Pokemon? Are we yeah, really gonna Pokemon we're gonna jump from shadow creatures to Pokemon, really, man? Okay. Hey, you it, gotta but this this Pokemon Go game <coughs> could it's, possibly it's create shadow people. <laughs> A midget. I uh, went Pokemon going with my kids, and it's amazing, Mike. You do I, it. I, so we would go down to the river. And imagine this, there's 200 people just all along the river, all peaceful, and they're all sharing information about which Pokemon's arriving, which, you know, wherever. And every once in a while, there'll be like a rare Pokemon, and everyone will rush to the area. And there's mostly like 18 to 23-year-olds, but there's also families. There's little kids dressed up in like Pikachu, and it's like Halloween down there. And everybody's peaceful. That's kind of cool, actually. Oh, it, it took over the park. All the homeless people are down there. They're loving it, of course. That's kind of cool. It's getting people out and being in when they're out. Like, they will, even though they're staring at their phones most of the yeah, time. Yeah, but they talk, too. Yeah, they don't have to stare at you. Know, it's not a kind of game, is it, that you have to keep staring at the screen? No, because your phone will vibrate, and there's, like, a Pokemon in the area, and then all of a sudden there'll be, like, a murmur over the crowd, and they'll start yelling which Pokemon, and everyone will move towards it. I mean, they've caused traffic jams in major cities. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> it's it's really insane. It, it's weird. I wonder how long it'll stay popular. I You know, I work at the hotel, and uh, there's a gym, like, right around the corner, so people are always pulling up into the zone, and uh, they're like... I go, are you checking in? They're like, no, we're we're Pokemon hunting. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I go, well, we, uh, and if it's slow street. enough, I'll go, ah, go catch it and get back. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Over but, down I the mean, road, they had, uh, they had one of the strip clubs <laughs> advertising they had Pokemon in there. <laughs> they had a oh, there. God. You want to fuck Pokemon? I have no idea what's going on. Strip but... club Pokemon. Oh, wow. Well, Sounds like... What happens is yeah. wow. some of the gyms just get generated in different locations. That's why some people have just are so furious. My uh, boss has a, a, a gym, like, right outside of his house, and there's people out there all the time. It drives them nuts. So yeah. it's it's kind of a random thing where they generate sometimes, and other times, like, I, don't, I don't really get it. But... Uh, I was really surprised how many kids were down there. And it was nice, you know, nobody was, there was no drinking. It wasn't like in the 70s, you know, like when we'd go out or go cruise the gut or something. It was just a bunch of drunk people. I mean, the kids today, at least the ones that I know that are my kids' as friends and all those Pokemon people, they're really good kids. It's nice to see. But I was thinking, where's the future of this? I mean... This is just one game where everyone's playing. Could you imagine a game where everyone plays, but then you actually interact with each other? Or, like, have fake fights or, uh, like, a sword fight, kind of like Boffering or something like that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or, like, a D&D &D or something. Like well, that. yeah, like, yeah, or, like, a D&D. &D. I mean, I bet this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Or a scary game where you have to, oh, you know, where yeah, you, I, you hear crashing and all of a sudden you get to this spot and then it just, uh, you know, something crazy happens and you hear all this and you, you, you die. You got strangled or whatever. They'll be yeah. like, well, I'm going to call it uh, <laughs> Pokemon Ghost. That's what you're going to call it. Yeah, Pokemon there you Ghost. go. And they, they scare <laughs> the crap out of you. Yeah, your phone starts just buzzing and it says, kill, kill, kill. <laughs> <laughs> And I then it just... puts a micro microwave signal into your brain so that you uh, start um, just killing people. Who knows? <laughs> I, I can just imagine the games that are coming down the pipe, though. Well, and they wouldn't want to do you that. Get the people interacting with each other, like fighting each other or forming groups or gangs. <laughs> Who knows what will happen? Okay, I'm going to try playing another of these blue heads. This one's my favorite. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try playing it. It's a song called 
Rolling. This is Rolling by the Blueheads. Hope everybody enjoys it. That didn't work out good. Somebody trying to Skype down me while I'm playing a song and screwed this right up. back uh, I'm back yeah I think I gotta put my phone on I was playing that out of my phone so you guys could hear it through the board I'm gonna have to uh, put put it on airplane mode because it actually disrupted the song and started try I don't know what happened with our Skype but it, you guys tried to dial and and it came through on my phone while I was <laughs> oh crap yeah well I have to put it I have to remember to put that on airplane mode so it doesn't uh, affect anything. Are we still on, Mike? Oh, yeah. We're on. 
We just oh, played cool. the Blueheads. Right on. That's good. Uh, I heard part of it, but then the uh, power went out here. So. Oh, is that what happened? Because all of a sudden yeah, it got... started dialing back at me. Yeah, the power went out, so I lost connection. Yeah, I lost connection too there for a sec. Hopefully the music was still playing. Oh, yeah. The, that all worked. So that's good that it happened while the song was playing, actually. Okay, I want to talk to Jeff a little bit more about this shadow thing he saw. I, I want him to hear some of the shit I've seen um, when I was a kid. How, how old were you then? I was nine when I first okay. met the first first one I saw. I've seen others before that, but not shadow. They, they were a little different. Yeah, okay. First things we saw, I was always at my grandmother's house. When we stayed over there and our parents dropped us off for the week or the weekend or whatever. And we always had that. Or summer holidays, we'd be dropped at my grandparents and stay there for the whole summer sometimes. Uh, one of us or two of us, you know. There was five kids. So, But anyway, we saw, we were down in the basement. It was, we were just watching an old black and white TV. And there was a kind of a... They had a kitchen and a living room down in their basement too, so it was kind of nice. And but the, the little basement windows were high up, and we, I think, it was my brother for, first noticed this face in the window, looking in on us, and this thing had red eyes too, and we were shit in our pants. This thing, it looked like some kind of ape face, and it was staring in through that at the window. And we ran, we're screaming upstairs and said, uh, there's a face in the window. They come down, check it out, and there's nothing there. And we, uh, all right, we were just imagining it. And, uh, was this at night? Yeah, it was at night, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was at night. It was dark outside, so. Uh, and then it happened several times after that, the same face in the window thing. And... And it wasn't Did just... your grandma ever see it? No, just us kids. All the kids seen she... the, all of the kids seen the same thing. No. Did she believe you? Yeah, because all the kids were saying the same thing at was different she and not even at the same time. Like sometimes it was two different kids from the family there, and they had the same pretty much experience as the other two kids. So they were saying almost wow. this, yeah, that's why they believed it. So. And there was stuff in the upstairs, and when we went in the upstairs of the house by ourselves, nobody would go up there. We, no, when when the house, even in the daytime, no one would go on the upstairs. That none of us kids would. We were terrified to go up there into the upper bedrooms. Was it like uh, an attic? Yeah. Sometimes we'd hear voices, or we'd see objects, like a ball or a thread of, like a ball of thread from her sewing machine would just drop off and then roll across the floor. And no one's up there. That's freaky. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Did, you, did you find it? Was there any uh, history to the house? Um, I wish they would have kept it, but they sold it. But it's in, it's in Aylmer, Ontario, and it it it's uh, one of the, like they, right on the edge by the farming area. So it was like a, um, a real farming like pioneer area so it's an old house yeah it's an old house was and it, it by a cemetery <laughs> no not this one this was in town this, uh, and uh there was a tree there that one time my brother and i were outside playing and the tree branches actually bent and formed into a face and tried and talking to us it was freaky and it was like the face of an Indian, of an like Indian. a Native in, a Native, Native American. American. It was what really it creepy. Yeah. But we couldn't understand we couldn't what understand. it said. No, no. That's, it, that's, that's, a, that's a great story. Great story. <laughs> it's not over yet. Not this over story, yet. story uh, is not, it's, uh, far, it's far from finished. Far from finished. Um, after, um, that, after that... Uh, yeah, the faces in the window. I think that's in the would kept it kept going on, and then I, we started seeing this 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 monster in our dreams. 
this ape creature monster with big fangs and red eyes. And we started seeing it in our dreams, even when we came home from the farm. What do you mean, we? All the like, kids? Yeah, my brother and I, and and uh, I'm not sure if my older brother, but my younger sister, too. And, Jeff, did you ever have nightmares about your shadow person? Um, no, I've had a couple um, other um, less friendly experiences. <laughs> The um, I've been like held down before. Yeah, I've had that by, by an invisible. I mean, you know, like uh, you know, just laying down there, and all of a sudden you feel yourself being like pressed into the bed, and you're just like, "What is this?" You know, quiet, yeah. and it just feels, you know. And you're just terrified, right? Evil. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't. You can't even, even you scream. Can move, but you don't want to. Yeah, you can't you even like scream. You're so scared. That's what I, I yeah. felt. But th- then, uh, you know, we, we what ha- what happened was it, it escalated to the point where where my grandmother actually went and got the Catholic Church involved. My mother and my grandmother went and talked to the priest in town, and they actually came and assessed the property. And, Were and, you there to see that? Yeah, I actually w- wanted everything to do with it. I I actually assisted the uh, the priest. I asked him everything. Uh, I, I wanted to assist him, and I was just little, but I actually assisted him wow. doing it. He let me, and he showed me how to do it, and he showed what me what to do? do. Well, we went around um, the whole ec- the whole property around the outside of the hedge and everything to the front yard and way around all the big all around the property. And, and spread holy salt and said prayers as we did it. Anyone can do this. Holy salt? Yeah. You Never did. heard of holy salt. Yeah, that's what they use for that. They bless the salt, and that's what they use to ward off the evil. Yeah, they, oh, wow. the Catholic Church will give you holy salt if you need it. I've never heard of that. I grew up, I grew up Catholic. That's, that's <laughs> Well, cool. no, that's part of the church that they don't really you know really like to tell everyone about it's right. just like exorcism yeah, they keep it under wraps because <clears throat> but if you ask for it i was good friends with the, the um with the, one of the uh the chaplains of the entire east coast and um you know i would share with them these stories and you know he would say yeah there's you're not the only one that's that had stories like this and he was he was really interested because I, you know it's something that uh, you know they take take pretty serious you know because you're someone surrounded by or you know seeing stuff like this that's something they're, you know, they're concerned with um, I don't know it's, uh, have you ever seen anything in the ER that was a miracle no, I, I've not really. You know, there's some. I think there's some people that come in there and they're probably, uh, you know, on some sort of drug or you know, something. But I think that a uh, few of them, it kind of opens up their like third eye, and they can kind of like see stuff that other people can't. And it's it's not stuff that they're making up. You know, it's they believe like, it. Well, yeah, but they'll 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 act like something's gonna happen, or they'll see something over in some area, and, and a few minutes later, something might happen. I mean, it's just really like it's really freaky. Wow. Because you know, they're they get all like you know freaked out, and they're like you know they start saying this is gonna something's gonna happen, or this is gonna happen, and something does. I mean, <laughs> it's really in that area. How do they know? How do they know? Uh, yeah, my I mean, grandmother used to that. see... My grandmother, when she was dying in the hospital, would see my grandfather come in and talk and have conversations with him. And she, and, and I said, who are you talking yeah. to? And she said, well, that's just Pa. Just say hi to him. You know, and right. He's right there. He's right there. Yeah, I've had that I experience. Work the, I, I work with a guy. I mean, um, you know, I, I do private stuff at, at homes. And I work with a guy who uh, who's seeing like his 
his brother that died like 10 years ago. Having a full <laughs> conversation? He's like, he's like, hey, he's, he's, no, he's like pointing to him. He's like sitting there and he's, he's pointing, he's like, do you see Adam? And I'm like, uh, I'm like, who's Adam? He's like, it's my brother. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, what do I say, you know? And then yeah, we're, I asked. I worked for hospice for eight or ten years and I had a few different right. patients that were having full conversations with somebody on the other side, you know. And and he goes, I'll be right with you. He'll like look they would, this one time he looked up at me and he goes, I'll be right with you. I'm just finishing up this conversation. And then he just like had the full conversation and he goes, Okay, well and you know, God bless you and goodbye and then he would turn towards me just like somebody's right there, you know. It's pretty weird. Wow. Yeah, well, I used to work in a um, cadaver lab, and um, you know there was one day, you know there were three of us in there, you know, and we had a cadaver just sitting there on the table, and it just like moved its arm, Ugh. just moved its arm. I mean, and we all just kind of like left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what well, did you we think the guy was like, still alive, man? You should have went and helped him. Holy oh, shit! No, I thought no. you were a doctor. What are you doing, leaving him there? <laughs> it alive? It was the guy had been dead for like six days or something. You know? Well, there's they that that there's used to happen. Blood. People sometimes go into a coma, uh, toast state, and then he, they they do come back alive again. It's weird, but that happens. Uh, we, he was cold. We pulled him out of like the you know the refrigerator, so. <laughs> how, how far did it move? Were you all right? Were you all right on him? We were. Well, you know, we were probably like ten feet away from him, and um, just like moved its arm, and then just like dropped it on the table. So did he lift it up, or did it like just kind of move off of him and then onto the ground, or he like moved it up and then just dropped it on the table Ooh, with geez. a clunk. That's yeah. not even one of the responses that happens with dead bodies that I've heard of. <laughs> no, I, I've, I mean, I've heard of that before. Cadavers move, don't they? Yeah, Sometimes. but not not their arms like no. that, though. Not yeah, not lifting their arm and dropping after, it. I've never heard of that one. Yeah. Well, after like they can still move a couple hours, they might twitch and stuff like that. But after you've been in the re like a basically a, a walk-in refrigerator for a couple of days, you don't move. <laughs> well, you're not Jeez. supposed. To. Yeah. Nice. Guess, how yeah, long? Yeah. How long did you guys leave the room for? Did you go uh, back at all, or did you wait till the next yeah. day? No, we we went back. We took a really long lunch, and then we were like kept to try to forget about it. <laughs> and then we all walked in kind of slowly. <laughs> did you pick the arm back up and put it back on him? Well, it didn't fall. I mean, we, we usually just leave the... The thing is, is we leave the arms next to them. We don't put them on top. Why okay. don't you just, so it, just, just so attach it, them so that you don't have to worry about that? Yeah, well, I mean, it was still attached, but I'm just saying <laughs> that his arm wasn't on his, you know, across his chest. It was... We, we just leave them next to their side so they don't fall. Well, this one, like, lift it up and... You know, just fell down again. Oh. That was freaky. Oh. What, were you, what were you guys doing with the cadavers? Were you were you in medical school or? No, we we prepare them for like different, you know, people, companies that want to use them for whatever reason. <laughs> you know, we'd fun. take them in, get them ready to. You stab them, we out. slab them. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Hey, Ma Mark, Marcus, are you there? I don't know if he's there. Marcus. That's uh, weird because he hasn't said a word, but it shows that he's on. Oh, yeah, I'm here. I okay. just muted my okay. mic. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was listening to the stream to see how it sounded. It sounds good. I want to. We're, we're almost out of time almost here. Out of I wanted you to. I wanted you, you, you had this, something had to this say about Pokemon, Pokemon or something. Who me? Yeah, didn't you say you wanted to? Or was that? Oh, no, no, I, we already I, talked about Pokemon. Oh, okay. 
All right, cool. Well, we got five minutes left. This was cool, man. I like this show. The the experience. Uh, we're running out of time though. To, if anybody wants something to say in the last few minutes, go for it. I just wonder if Mark? anybody's seen uh, if anybody's seen any other type of ghost or anything like that. Oh, geez, I've seen all kinds I'm, of them. That's like we could keep yeah. going on another show here. I've seen. Yeah. Uh, shadow people like I've seen a shadow dog uh, I've seen all kinds <laughs> of shadow people around this this haunted clock that we have actually we have a haunted gra- used, grandfather clock yeah. I used to see the um, it was really odd I don't know why they would do this but I would see like they just wave their arm in front of the door I don't know if, if you guys have seen something like oh that. Oh, my God. I've seen one time I've seen a hand I've, actually pulling weeds out and throwing them on the side of the, yeah, on my front yeah, yard, pulling like, out of the sidewalk weeds, just a hand, and then it disappeared. Yes. Well, see, I was at, like, the end of a – There, there was no way this was possible because I was, like, the end of a hallway, and this arm would would show up in front of the door – but it was impossible for someone to stand there because they would have been like in the wall. Right. I get you. So, yeah. so where did the arms coming from nowhere? It's just waving and then it just disappeared. Or you see like a face. You yeah, and you see like a face and you're like there's nowhere for them to hide. It just shows up. <laughs> hey Wolfman. Yeah. What happened? So after the priest went around and did the salt, yeah. what became of it? Did, did, did it help? Things... Yeah, actually did help. Yeah, and we we were able to go upstairs and sleep in the bedrooms upstairs after that, and nothing. And we didn't have any more activity there at all. It worked. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to finish that story. I needed to know what happened. Yeah. So does that the salt work for uh, like? aliens too or I don't know the... that's a good question I uh, because I've had like stuff like that happen too so I don't really know if that works or not but I, I would I'm say sure. it'd probably be a good thing to do nonetheless because maybe it might work who knows yeah maybe I'm they su- use sugar I don't know with all the stuff you've seen I'm surprised you don't carry that salt with you all the time I, can, I make my own <laughs> I, any kind of salt works. Rock salt works really good. Even just this kind you throw in your driveway works great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for well, being on, that everyone. That we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to continue this. But anyway, that's a good point, though. The salt, yeah, that's what we use. Thanks for coming on, guys. Yes. I'm playing that the ex- spooky show. I'm, I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing the exiting music. It's from an old band I was in. It's a song called Worm Bomb. And it's about tequila. It's kind of a spooky song, too. I got a lot to do. See you guys next week. Good night, everybody. All right, good night. Society is a pile of shit. The world's a